Resident Evil 4. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. I have no idea why I just why I stressed the middle part of the intonation of my name, but I did, and it's here forever because I'm not stopping this and re-recording. This is my Resident Evil 4. Professional difficulty, no damage run. We're on chapter 5-1. Shit's about to kick off. And there's a really interesting glitch you can do here that will completely skip this entire firefight and get you to the top of the cliffs after it. It involves this area right here. It involves mantling off on one of the edges of the geometry and falling through the graphics and then doing some out of bounds stuff. However, you'll not see any of that in this guide slash run playthrough thing because this is entitled to be a challenge run. And the whole point of these runs for me personally is is to face the challenge. Somebody mentioned that you can completely skip the two gigantes by using the, is it the Dipman glitch and run past that room and it would save you a lot of ammo and things of that nature, which is completely true. I have full faith in what that guy was saying, uh, but I replied saying, you know, that's not the point. This is a series that's, that's meant to, to be a challenge. And as much as I'm using strategies and techniques that will alleviate said challenge, I don't want to avoid them completely. You know, I could do this with the Chicago typewriter, but then the real question is, why would I bother? And there's your answer. So you'll not see me doing any of those skips. Uh, you'll see me doing tricks, you'll see me doing uh, all kinds of, of strategies. But the fundamental that you'll see is I overcome the s situations that the game presents to you. And I think that's probably the philosophy for my channel. And I get a lot of comments, and they always start the same way. Where I'm just noticing here, have you noticed this ladder that I'm stood next to? Watch when somebody goes in front of it. See their body? It's two-dimensional. The top of this ladder is is literally three different planes giving the illusion of 3D, but there's no actual circumference to it. It's flat. I just realised that. It must be this terrible texture we're staring at. This might be worth speeding up. But I'll keep talking. This is a long fucking video, guys, so you're going to get sick of my voice. But I get a lot of comments to begin with. It's easier to do this. It's easier to do that. It's easier, this this phrase, this... this it's easier, this, this mindset. There's a lot of easier ways to do things, guys. There are. In every situation you can you can find an easier way to do something. Like Metal Gear Rising. You can use the Fox Blade. And you can dismember enemies with standard attacks. You can use those special suits. Those special wigs. You can use all kinds of stuff. And it'll make the game a lot easier. But that's not the point. Like my Metal Gear Solid 2 walkthrough. It's on European Extreme. It's a really tough game. Anybody who's never played that game and wants a challenge, not only will the controls challenge you because it's an old game, but the game itself is as tough as it gets. There's some parts of that that are insanely challenging. And then somebody will leave a comment after I've showed them that it can be done, as the game is, as the game was intended to be played, and then someone will leave something like, oh, you could have worn a wig and done this. Uh, yeah, I could have. But, that's not the point. <laughs> like, I could have wore the fucking stealth suit and ran through the game. We're completely invisible to everything except for bosses. I wonder why I didn't do that. Well, maybe because it's utter shit, it's not very fun, and it's even worse to watch. But, it's cheating. That's what it is. It is the equivalent of a cheat code. It's a cheat item. It's a... A game shark, an action replay, it's whatever you want to call it. It's the type of stuff you did when you were younger that you've grown up and grew out of. Not everybody has. And some people are just looking for the easiest ride through. And what I generally preference in a lot of my videos is, you know, I'm going to give you strategies that anybody of any skill level can try and repeat. Certain projects this doesn't count for. For instance, the stuff in this right now that you'll have to practice before you can repeat what I'm doing. The stuff that you don't. You know, my Bayonetta pure platinum run. That's not a walkthrough, that's a skill through. That's a that's a, a run. It's me doing something that is very challenging and very skill dependent and very luck dependent. 
I wouldn't expect anybody to be able to imitate what happens in those videos unless they have a good understanding of how that game works. And that's the distinction between a walkthrough and something that's intended to display skill. And the good thing about my walkthroughs is, as I mentioned, any skill level player can repeat what they're seeing. And they also feature mistakes. And they feature mistakes not intentionally, but honestly. And I might have to elaborate what I mean by this, because there's a lot of people that are a little bit naive, and not in a bad way, just in an innocent way towards how videos work. Like, I I studied editing at university. It was part of my, my digital film degree that I took. So, uh, I was taught the fundamentals, the theory, and just the basics on, on what editing is, why we do it, what's the motivation behind certain degrees of it, and a lot of the tricks. And then from that, you just kind of do it. And the more you do something, the more you, you, know, you learn to get quicker and better and, and all those great things. And then you learn how to, to do the more intricate stuff, which is the stuff you can't see because it, see because it flows and interpolates so perfectly that you don't see the cut. And there's something on YouTube which is called Editing Yourself to Greatness. And you might wonder what that means. You might think, oh, that's like cherry-picking gameplays. Well, it's not. That is part of it, but that's not the full extent to it. Editing is incredibly powerful. Editing is so powerful that it's illegal in some ways because it's classed as propaganda and subliminal messaging. And there are certain things that you can do in, in videos that will completely change the way it makes the footage look. And I know exactly how to do this, and I choose not to do it, because I think when mistakes are in the game, or in the footage, I think it humanizes what you're watching, and I think it gives people who can't do the no damage, crazy, insane amounts of skill, you know, never touch the floor, kill everything in the entire room type of gameplay, I think that's very polarizing. It's amazing, it's it's inspiring, but it's polarizing because you watch it and the first thing you think is, I can't fucking do that. And you could, should you invest the same time, but it's going to be really hard. So when I say honest, I don't edit out mistakes as far as what happens in the run that is successful. I edit out all the unsuccessful runs, which in some ways you could say is editing yourself to greatness because it makes it look like I never make mistakes which is not true a lot of people seem seem to think that's true you know you, how is it that you never die in your walkthroughs because I, I trim those bits out <laughs> you know you don't want to watch me die a million times that's a playthrough or that's that's a let's play or that's a bad walkthrough in my opinion so stuff like that is mandatory to be removed there's no place for it a lot of people like it. You'd be surprised, actually. Like, people would love me to do fail montages and stuff like that. But the only problem is, the way I edit it makes fail montages tricky to do because I'm constantly cycling through source plates and I, and I remove a lot of them. So, you know, I get rid of them before I can do that. It's also a lot of work because it, when you're watching it, it might be 40 seconds of fails, but when you're editing it, you might have 10 hours worth of, of raw footage and they split into 15-minute recordings. That's a lot of recordings. It, it takes a lot longer than you'd think. But editing yourself to greatness the way I mean is... Well, here's a good example of it for you. On this game, when I go into the sniper rifle, it transitions from the picture of Leon to the picture of the scope. And in the transitional frames, the stuff that you can't see because it moves too quickly for the human eye unless you stop it and slow it down, there are frames there that you do not notice happening. What you could do, should you be so inclined, if you wanted your gameplay to be the best but in fact didn't spend the time to be the best or, or play very, very well, you could miss five sniper rifle shots before you finally hit the dude. And if you've not moved, you can go in with editing, at the very beginning of your very first shot, those frames that you can't see because it happens too quickly on the transition, you can cut that footage there to the shot where you hit him in the head perfectly, and you can delete everything in between, line up those two interpolated frames, and then in the gameplay, it scrubs along 
as if it was your very first shot, there is no perceivable cut, and you are a beast with a sniper rifle. You can do that if you know how to, and if you're subtle enough, and if you've got that kind of finesse with editing. Very simple to do. Certain stuff is more technical and more difficult, but that, very simple. It would literally take 30 seconds to do that, if you know what you're doing. And you could do that for every single game you play. You find the frames that are less obtrusive, like, you could even play the game with that in mind and line up your footage. Like, people who make YouTube videos all do this kind of thing. They'll stand in a neutral state somewhere, they'll start counting, moving menus, so that they can sync up their commentary with the video. You know, I do it myself on the stuff I've done. Left, right, left, right, start, or trigger, so the trigger makes a big noise, and I know the moment whatever that trigger did it coincides with the noise, I've synced it up. Unfortunately, my capture software is a piece of dog shit. It's getting old and sleepy now, so it, it desyncs, so that doesn't work for me. And I have to get really creative, and a lot of the times, I just end up lowering the volume so you can't hear it so much, because some of it's completely unsalvageable. But everybody's done that kind of thing. Well, you can do it with other stuff as well. Like, a great example is, for instance, if there's a, an environmental climbing section in a game, the first few frames of those animations, the initiation of you going from a standing state to climbing the wall to do the awkward section, there'll be some kind of animation. The animation's a preset, so it will always be the same regardless of how many times that you do it. So you could have the first piece of footage, you know, climbing up, and then you get hit by several things, and then seven tries later, you don't get hit by any of those things, and you just chop it together. You chop it together on that climbing animation, and then you have that, that seamless piece of editing. And it makes it work. That one isn't what I would say editing yourself to, to greatness. That is just the perfect run. And that is an example of, of what you're watching now. But you should always be aware, guys, that there's, there's people that try to subvert it. Because there's people that try to subvert everything. There was a fantastic... Um, Call of Duty commentator who, who used to do quick scoping, and people were like, "This guy's amazing, you know. This is crazy what he's doing." And the funny thing is, he wasn't quick scoping at all. He was hard scoping. And for the people who don't play these games, a quick scope is when you flick up the aimer and you fire before the aimer's even up on the screen, and you get a really quick instant kill. It works because of how the auto aim works on those games. And it's very annoying, or you really love it and you do the 360 ladder stalls, you know, swap out to pistol bullshit stuff. But hard scoping is somebody who looks down the sniper rifle scope for a while, lines up their shot and, you know, uses the sniper hat as it was intended to be used. And what this dude was doing is he was aiming for ages, getting his targets lined up and everything, shooting them, but he was editing out the frames where he was lining up the shot. So he would remove everything pre you know, entering the scope to the instance of the shot. And he was designing his own quick scopes from hard scopes. And that is an example of, of editing yourself to greatness. And it happens a lot. And that kind of stuff I think is underhanded unless you, you tell people that it's happening. Sometimes it can look really stylish and awesome and if you're making some kind of stylish video I think that's perfectly fine. You know, some of the nicest transitions are the, the match cuts. I had a really good example on a, a Black Ops montage I made a long time ago where the MP5 has a set animation when it reloads. All weapons do on those games. And the cool thing is, the position of it on the screen never changes regardless of what the player's doing. So it's something you don't even have to line up because it's universally lined up for you. So I could link footage between maps and different games by doing the reload because I'd just line up the animations so that the next frame at the, you know, the zenith of the reload was a different piece of footage, and it would seamlessly transition together, and it looked really sweet. And and those are just, you know, some fun tricks that you can do with, with editing and all that good stuff. But there's a lot of, of really underhanded editing-y stuff that you see, and it, it misrepresents the game in some ways. And I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I understand why some people do it. I think the biggest thing that gets me is the people who lie about the difficulty. Because apparently there's some pretty big channels on YouTube that, that do that, that advertise it as a certain difficulty and they're playing on normal. And that thought to me just doesn't occur in my brain because I'm an honest person and apparently they're not. 
which is why you get a lot of people that come along on your videos and and doubt the difficulty which a lot of that is just a, an envious response to somebody who can't do what they're watching even though I say in the videos you know anyone can do what I'm doing here that's the point you know games have got a skill ceiling and anyone can get to any skill ceiling should they invest enough time you know will it take you a long time to be as good as as optic scumpy on call of duty yes but that's because scumps put in the time and now he's at a level which is you know the best his games ever been if you want to get to that level you have to do the same thing he did is there a certain measure of you know affinity towards the game i think there is i think certain people will always be better at certain things if they show that proclivity towards it but a run such as this is more a test of editing than it is really a test of skill there's a lot of skill to it but most of it is just lining up the dominoes and showing the successful trip of what you've lined up and that's why it works and that's why I had a lot of fun making this because it's something I've not really tried before and the best feeling that I had throughout it was seeing the edits gradually stop gradually slow down and be be less frequent because it means you're improving and I think that's a really good thing and then if you want to take it a step further you can do like single segment you know you can try and marathon it you can you can increase on even that and then take it to a next level but just be aware that there are people that will claim that they are that when they're not so you've just got to try and be as aware as you can about how editing works and not everybody is as educated with it not everybody is as aware because good editing is editing you don't see but it's very easy to exploit what you watch and unless you've got someone who's willing to explain it or who's willing to to point it out or admit to doing it it can be very tricky to see that And I'll never do that I don't think because I just don't see the point to me at that point all the skill is is in the editing and not in the gameplay and I would rather do the gameplay part because that's the part I enjoy the most so it's it's one of those those weird things but it does happen and it happens a lot and you can watch a lot of stuff like multiplayer stuff of people where they'll they'll trim together clips of them doing really really well which is essentially what montages were you know montages existed because people wanted to watch that kind of stuff enjoyed it but what happens is they get this false impression of, of what it's like and I think it's just once again I think it's just naivety and ignorance is all and a lot of people look at naivety and ignorance as, as a, a negative connotation as like an insult and I suppose in some ways it can be but I think when it is innocent I don't think you should take it as an insult you should just take it as something you don't know yet And especially when it comes to us, like, if you've never edited a video, how the hell are you supposed to know? Like, my mum thinks that car on TV that gets up and dances as a robot humanoid is real. And she just wonders how the hell they've done that, because she thinks it's fantastic. She thinks, you know, the technology in the world is improving, and it is. But it's more of her awareness of technology rather than actual technology. And there's a, <laughs> there's a whole history of that with marketing and advertising, you know. Just look at the, the fucking... The cosmetic stuff for women like just imagine how much pressure it is to be uh, a woman in today's society and I'm not even talking about when they had it you know truly hard when essentially they were just brood mares that weren't allowed to enter any official buildings because women were for kitchens and bedrooms and not to be seen which is a horrendous thing to say but it, it's what was kind of happening at the time and now that is subsided a little bit and you know it's, it's not by no means equal but it's it's better and what do they have to compete with now this fucking fake idealized bullshit image of what women should be and what all women are and every single magazine every single advert every single bloody mannequin every single shop every every single everything is this perfectly sized petite you know zero imperfection crazy starved dumb model that is prescribing this this image that every single one of these magazines proliferates so that all these girls who don't look like that or who will never look like that because of body type or genetics or whatever 
have this massive complex of self-loathing because they're being conditioned that this is what you should look like, this is what you should wear, this is how you should be, this is how you should act. And they're all doing it based on a fucking lie. Like, every one of those pictures, all those posters, has been doctored by somebody on Photoshop with a clone stamp and an understanding of skin tones. You know, every single, like, broken vein, hint of cellulite, crease, fold, imperfection has been smoothed away and airbrushed out. And there are some girls that don't realise this and just get really upset. Like, and buy a load of shit they don't need and pay an insane amounts of prices for products which are probably no different than the cheaper ones they've just got a label on them that gives them some kind of class status it's fucking horrendous like I would die if I was a girl because I just don't care like I can't even begin I'd have nosebleeds if the amount of of my not caring ever personified into something physical I really don't like people can think what the fuck they like like, I've had a spot on the middle of my forehead for a few days now, and he's practically a resident. I'm going to name him shortly. I don't feel shame for him. I don't feel embarrassed at the fact that he's there. He just kind of is. Is it because I don't wash myself? Is it because I'm un unclean or some kind of, you know, like, vermin who spreads pestilence? No, it's just, it's warm. I touch my face occasionally. We're quite greasy animals when we want to be with our fingers and what have you. And that kind of shit just happens. But there's some people who, who won't even leave the house because of stuff like that. And all these insecurities build from something which is fake. Look at those adverts for any product. You know, 6% of 70 women on a boat agreed. Like, yes, that's quite the consensus you've got there. 76 out of 113. And then there's stuff like... The eyelash stuff gets me. It's the best example of this type of bullshit. There's some woman walking around with eyelashes the side of fucking Katana. She could probably, like, cleave an army in two if she blinked, fall down, cut her way through the planet, and then, like, fall into space, and then still survive because she's got some kind of weird gravitational pull between her eyelashes because they're so fucking ridiculously huge. And then on the bottom of the screen, they're like, Oh, if you get our wonder brush and fag your eyes like a, like a windmill, you'll have these fantastic locks and lushes and blah, 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 blah. And at the bottom, he goes... Fake. Completely fake. We gave her fake ones to make them look fuller. But it's okay, because we've told you. So we're now selling you this idealised product that doesn't do what it's intended to do because they're all extensions and fake anyway. But we're selling you as if that's not true. And the people with bad eyesight, or who just stare at the beautiful eyes and think, I could have those fantastic lashes for 9 99 and a reoccurring credit card payment, have not realised this. And then they get it, they smudge it on like, you know, a seven-year-old with your mum's lipstick and they wonder why their eyes look so damn flat. It's just subvertive, and it's everywhere. But this is Resident Evil 4, and we're shooting a lot of dudes. This is a long level. A lot of guys with those shock batons as well. You want to be careful. And you can tell that the difficulty's gone up just with how many knives these enemies are taking. If I could go back and change anything about this game, I think I'd let the player upgrade the knife. Because how useful it is, if you get a little bit more damage off it, or just a different knife, like a, a longer knife or something. Like a knife that fires knives. That'd be alright, wouldn't it? <laughs> like a great... A knife whip. This is my knife whip. Just anything, really. To make it just a little bit better, it would be a force to be reckoned with. But in here, there's some really underhanded bullshit that goes on. There's a, a jump scare that involves a fridge... And you can run past it if you know what you're doing. But it, it took me a couple of attempts to do it because I just could not get the timing right. It's in this room coming up. So there's this fella. So shotgun him down. Shotgun him again. That's two, three. Three shots and he's dead. Not so bad. There's your green herb. I've got a stockpile of the green herbs where I'm not finding any of the other ones to mix them with. And I hate mixing two greens together so I always save them. So this is it. This is the fridge. So I step back into it, trigger it, and run forward. And that is one way of doing it. But I've seen speedrunners completely run past it and not get hit by it. So there must, it must be either the Dipman glitch or I'm doing something wrong. But that's one way of doing it. Do not step on that body until he stopped burning either. You will get uh, hit by it, which is kind of annoying. But keep on pushing forward. 
But I think with that editing stuff that I mentioned, if people were more forthcoming with what they were doing, I think they'd get more respect for it. Because instead what happens is you'll get people that spot it and then they'll call them out. And then they'll do the whole, you know, this person edits themselves to make them look better than what they are. And all that kind of stuff. And it just becomes, it becomes a thing then because they've tried to hide it. And if they showed or they explained what they'd done, they, they might get people to respect them because that kind of editing is, is tooth and comb and intensive. It takes quite a long time to do. Like any, any kind of you know, highly scrubbing through source material editing is the type of stuff that might not be difficult, but it's it's long and it's laborious and it's the stuff that takes a while. This room is really hard as well. I, I got hit about three or four times here because I just couldn't get this to work. And in the end, I just ended up going shotgun happy with any which way I could really. And it's, it's due to that thing. Every single one of these La Plaga people dropped this crazy face of thing that that's got some weird hit detection on it where it jumps and sometimes it's not registered as a weapon which makes me think perhaps that could be a grab and you have to you know line up for it to do its little preset animation and I didn't line up but I've got a couple of things I'm editing at the moment uh, none of them are anything too intensive I need to get another copy of After Effects I keep meaning to because a lot of like the stills that I make in Photoshop for text and all that kind of good stuff, it looks so flat. Especially when you've you know you've done things like motion graphics and you've messed around in After Effects, you can you can make a very simple title so much more interesting to look at just by adding some kind of motion to it. And there's tons of effects that come built in with After Effects that you can mess with. Not mentioning I've got the optical flare one, which is is like all them and, and none of it is you and it somehow manages to look amazing. But we're coming up to the end of, of this chapter. But we have to do a little bit more backtracking, I think. It's, it's one of those weird levels, this. They're long, but they're not hard. And I was really worried about the later stage of this game, but I, I suppose I was just at a point where I was sharp. And when you're sharp on any game, you, you just do well. You destroy. And I got a really funny comment from somebody on a Dark Souls 2 video. I find a lack of humility to be one of the most off-putting things anybody can have. Just don't like it. I think it's... I think there's a time and a place for it. But to a stranger, what are you trying to, to prove? That'd be like standing next to a stranger at a urinal and pissing in their urinal. Just to show that you have the dexterity to do it and you're confident enough to put your penis in their direction. And to me, that's retarded. So I, I just... I don't... Ooh... This is weird. So this is one of those moments where you go, why the hell is this a thing? But it is a thing. And here's how it works. This opens up every so often and they throw dynamite at you. There's a ton of dudes in that room and they take a big beating. So you can either do what I'm doing now and thin the numbers out by shooting their dynamite or you can do this fantastic trick I saw, I think it was the Englishman do on a speed run where you can stand to the side of this this room that I'm about to enter, step back, it opens, and then you can sprint in and, like, surprise cockface them all, which is a really good strategy, and I think you're going to see it once I've thinned the numbers a little bit, but I think there's, like, six guys, something dumb. It's, it's a funny part because it's so irreverent and stupid, but at the same time, it, it's a legitimate threat, and right now I'm probably missing the fact I haven't bought the stock, which... A lot of people have been mourning in the comments, and I don't think it's going to get any better, guys, because I, I don't think I ever buy it. And there's, there's no meta to that decision, it's just forgetfulness. A lack of familiarity with the game. But there goes that dude. There goes his dynamite. Anything else? Right. What happens is, I think when you move forward, you spawn... Oh no, they're not dead! Jesus! crazy so I'm gonna grenade him now that oh that was, was that a good I can't even tell when you've not played this for a while and you do the grenades they don't make any sense the trajectory is so weird oh, you might not see that strategy after all with the looks of this Ah, oh, that's a shame well anyway 
to the right of me right now, there's there's like a gap. And if you run down there, the door shuts and then it opens. Do you see where those barrels were to my left just then? That's where you can do that. And it's a really fun trick. Just watch some Resi 4 speedruns. You'll see people do that. It's it's pretty much well known. But the only thing left... Oh, somebody's here. You see that? Leon is so good at letting you know someone's close. That little flick of his head. It's such a small touch, but it's so good. Because it's player feedback and it's not obtrusive. But we just need to hit this next door and that's the end of this this level. I'd love to tell you that they're going to get shorter, but they're not. So the commentary is probably going to be just as all over the place as this one was. But thank you very much for watching. Anyhow, guys, I'm going to sign off now so I don't damage my throat. There's still quite a few of these to, to talk over. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching and you take care now.